Let's begin uh, part five of the medical, legal, and ethical issues, and we're going to talk about forcible restraint in this section. So, forcible restraints, this is the act of subduing a patient to prevent a physical action. And the time when this is acceptable is whenever a patient is mentally uh, incompetent, or physically violent but however there's some a um, few more criteria that we're going to talk about that needs to be met before we can actually forcibly restrain the patient but I just want to go over a little bit and we will when we go over behavioral emergencies talk more about physical restraints and how to um, restrain someone who is a threat to themselves or others one, you do not want to restrain them on their stomach. So make sure that we do not do that because we could actually end up harming the patient. It is very, very possible for our patients to stop breathing and then before you know it, they're in cardiac arrest. Um, next, just document, document, document. Whenever you have a patient who has to be restrained. You want to make sure you document the situation very clearly and have witnesses and make sure you get the names of law enforcement personnel that are there and get their badge numbers as well. So forcible restraint, it is legally permissible if you believe the patient is a threat to themselves or to others and of course they need to be transported to the hospital and it's a good idea to control consult medical control for authorization to restrain a patient now some protocols may have them in place but for me i would like to contact medical control and at least get that other set of ears and that other opinion behind it and make sure that the conversation is recorded as well so, if you was to restrain someone without the proper authority or the proper reasons, now you are open wide, now you've opened yourself to civil and criminal prosecution. So, just think about it. If you illegally restrain someone, you just kidnap them. Remember we talked about in the kidnapping section, kidnapping is forcible. You know, there's some type of violence going on. You take them against their will. And that's exactly what you're doing here. So, now just if, keep this in mind, if the patient is responsive and you're not in some type of emergency situation, you will need to get consent from the patient to restrain them. If you do not get consent from them, well then you are wide open, once again, to civil and criminal penalties. Like I said, when we get into medical and behavioral emergencies, we will actually work on and go over how to physically restrain someone. Uh, but right now, just know that you can restrain someone if they're a threat to themselves or others, and you must have authorization to do so. And make sure you document, document, document everything that's happening, the entire situation. Make sure you document the names of the people who are there to assist you and any witnesses that are there as well. And if you contact medical control, make sure you do so on a recorded line and make sure you get the name of the physician and you get that physician to sign your, your uh, patient care report. All right, that concludes part five. Part six will consist of the right to refuse treatment and advanced directives.